Hey guys, Willie here with WTF Car Reviews and today we're going to be reviewing the all new 2024 Mini Cooper S Hardtop. And a big thanks to Mini of Wesley Chapel for helping make this review possible. I'll leave a link to your inventory below and if you're looking for a new car or SUV in the Tampa, Wesley Chapel area, I would definitely recommend checking these guys out. And for those of you guys who don't know, Mini Cooper started off as a small hatchback sold by the British Motor Corporation in 1961 all the way to 2000 when the Mini name was purchased by BMW. Since then, the Mini Cooper has had three generations. The 2024 Mini Cooper that you see here is actually the final model year before the all-new fourth generation is released. And for 2024, all Mini Coopers will come standard with a six-speed manual and there will be a limited seaside edition trim exclusive to the convertible and limited to only 500 models. The 2024 Cooper comes standard with a 134 horsepower turbo three-cylinder, but here we have the S with a larger two-liter turbo four-cylinder, cranking out a pretty healthy 189 horsepower 207 pound-feet of torque and a base price of 30,000 bucks. What else we get for that money? Let's jump right in. So although the base price is 30,000 bucks, this is just about a fully loaded Cooper S. We'll go over all the features. We have full front parking sensing up front, mini badges blacked out, red S badge as well. As you see, radiator up top, intercooler down below with quite a bit of airflow and pockets that lead directly to your brakes and also functional air pockets in the corners helping out with the aerodynamics. We have full LED headlamps, LED daytime running strips, and a functional hood scoop for the S. The regular models do not get this, but the S get the hood scoop. We have the white stripes here too, white matching roof. The wheel and tire setup are the 17 inch rims wrapped in Hankook Optimo all season tires, dimensions being 205-45 R17. So we'll see how these 205 wide tires put the power down. As I remember the 2023 S we reviewed, put the power down pretty well, but we'll see what it does for 2024. We get a side sensor helping us out with the 360 S badge on the fender well, some plastic cladding for the rocker panel side skirt area. We have smart access for the driver and a front passenger. If we take a quick look at the window sticker for this 2024 Mini Cooper S hardtop, four door the base price of thirty thousand bucks we get the chili red exterior with the chesterfield leather malt brown interior all included as part of the base price what's not included as part of the base price is this iconic trim for eighty four hundred bucks you get the seven speed sport dual clutch transmission power folding mirrors comfort access keyless entry piano black exterior trim auto dimming rear view mirror front center armrest heated front seats driving modes dual zone auto climate control driving assistant parking assistant serious Harman Kardon premium sound system, heads up display, wireless charging, and mini navigation. So it's a big package. You get quite a bit for the money, but it is a little bit pricey for a $30,000 car. We get the 17 inch spoke, two tone rims included. Same with the Napa leather steering wheel, 150 bucks for this white bonnet stripes, 995 for the destination charge, totaling us out a tick under 40,000 bucks. Fuel economy is impressive, 28 city, 38 on the highway. More of the standard features you guys can pause take a look as you mentioned we come standard with a six-speed manual transmission for 2024 continuing along same rear wheel and tire setup the only difference is a smaller brake caliper out rear we have full rear parking sensing british style tail lights to say mini on them in the corner the mini nameplates all blacked out cooper s the cooper's blacked out with a red s the white roof I'm not sure how I feel about it, but I can definitely see the British theme, especially our rear with these taillights, centered exhaust tips. And speaking of these exhaust tips, let's fire up this two liter, four cylinder turbo engine and hear how she sounds. Hi guys, that was the sound of the two liter twin power turbo four cylinder derived from BMW sold by Mini for this 2024 Cooper S. And it sounds really good for a two liter turbo, cranking out a very healthy amount of power at 189 horsepower, 207 pound feet of torque. And we know BMW, they usually underrate the crap out of their motors, enough to get this car to 60 in around six seconds. I believe Car and Driver tested it at 6.2, making it a no joke performer with a $30,000 base price. We have the functional hood scoop, as we mentioned, the air getting sucked in right over there. That's about it though, guys. I like the headlight cutouts, so that's pretty fancy. What you see is basically what we get. You can shut the hood right down, take a walk around this 2024 Mini Cooper S hardtop one more time, and then take a step inside and see what we get 
with a near $40,000 base price. Again, smart access for the driver and the front passenger. White mirror caps, if we didn't mention, we don't get blind spot monitoring on the glass, unfortunately, but it's a pretty large glass. You get a pretty good idea of what you got going on in your blind spot. Taking a step inside, we'll turn these headlights back to auto so the car's not yelling at me. But we have soft touch up top, aluminum beneath that, aluminum door handle lock and unlock, Harman Kardon sound system, gushy soft armrest, four window auto on touch, power folding mirrors, and four way adjustable. Down below, just hard plastic. You could probably squeeze a foot long in this compartment. Mini Cooper S aluminum nameplate as we step inside. And we got some beautiful seats. These are the Chesterfield leather malt brown seats. Really good bolstering support. I love the quilts. I just don't like how they're not power adjustable. And for $40,000 and part of an $8,400 package i wish the power adjustable seats were included i don't expect the base mini cooper s hardtop four door to have the power adjustable seats but for the 8400 package it should be included the seats are still absolutely beautiful you can still recline drop lift and slide the seats with adjustable thigh support taking a step inside we can really check it out so foot on the brake engine start stop and everything fires right to life. But first thing we notice is the steering wheel, just like a BMW M car. This is a thick wheel with really fat 10 and two bolstering notch, nine and three feels great. The mini horn area is rubberized for the outside, hard plastic for the inside. The horn itself, loud and aggressive. I was not expecting a horn that powerful from a car this small. On the left side, we have our cruise control settings and the right side voice commands. You can hang up and answer your phone calls and adjust the infotainment with the volume controls too. You can skip your songs. Speaking of infotainment, let's check it out. Right now for the heads up display, you can adjust between song stations. You can go left and right to adjust the volume and that's about it. The paddle shifters are really large. They're just plastic, but to be expected for a $30,000 base price, we'll turn this music down so I don't get hit with copyright. Still very large paddle shifters, very easy to click. The stocks have a really satisfying click, auto headlamps, auto high beams, and auto rain sensing wipers, all appreciated for this price point. Full digital gauge display, the TAC goes to about 6,500 RPM, the fuel level on the right side with the digital speedo in the center. The heads up display is also included as part of that $8,400 package. We get some faux carbon aluminum throughout the center of this dashboard and left side, very Camaro-esque air vents for the center, just some old school air vents. Also on the left side, we have our fog lights, auto headlamps, interior brightness adjustments, and a tilt and telescoping steering wheel. You can get a good look at the pedals. Nice. The dashboard is soft touch rubberized, Harman Kardon speaker in the center of it. If you mentioned the heads up display, pretty easy to see. It's kind of clunky the way it comes up, but it's still nice to get the heads up display nevertheless. The touchscreen, we can check it out. I believe it's 8.8 .8 inches. We can get navigation too. You can enter the address, press home. You have media communication, navigation, mini, and apps. You can also scroll between several different home screens. You can see my mini, MPGs, also a notification screen. We can go right back to where we started. The map, we can check it out. Kind of old school resolution, but it's very responsive. It responds basically just like an iPhone. And the resolution is good enough. Shows you where the gas stations are, hotels, all of that. We can also go back to the home screen. We see communication, media, nav, mini, and apps, as we mentioned. My personal favorite to look at at all times will be the map, so we'll leave it there. I like this illuminated trim outside of the center stack. It reminds me of an old school mini. I took my driver's test in like a 2006 Mini Cooper. It wasn't an S, unfortunately, but it had the whole speedometer gauges all going on right through the center stack. And I like how we keep that circle here. Beneath that, we have some plastic. This is a brand new vehicle, we'll leave it there for the potential owner of this vehicle. You have your presets for the radio, volume, skip controls, band, and mode. Beneath that, dual zone automatic climate control, heated seats, no ventilated seats, wouldn't be expected. All hard buttons for the climate, that's a thumbs up by me. You can turn the parking sensors on or off, auto engine start stop will disable for this review. I like the start stop button, that looks pretty cool. To the right of that, traction control, sport mode, and green mode. Beneath that, USB A and C port and a 12 volt. Above it, the cup holders will fit 24 to 30 ounce bottles with no problem. The gear selector is controlling our seven speed dual clutch transmission. The car comes standard with a six speed manual. Hopefully they get the chance to review a six speed manual, but here we get the seven speed dual clutch, which should be faster. The backup camera, we can check it out real quick. Really high resolution. We don't get the 360, but we have front and rear parking sensing, no guidance lines or trajectory. We have a really good display. You can see the guy walking around behind me right now. You see that very clearly, throwing right back in the park. Unfortunately, we stay in our backup camera mode. You gotta press this home button to actually return, press this map again to go back to where I want it to be. Oops, there we go. 
Okay, the gear selector itself is outlined in leather trim. We have shortcuts if you don't wanna go through the touchscreen itself. And the touchscreen itself, it's not the most responsive of a touch. So I see a lot of people would probably prefer using this dial with all the hard button shortcuts, the media, communication, map, navigation, menu, back, and option. We get a real emergency brake. The center console kind of gets in the way of accessing it. The center console is also an option. You have a wireless charging pad in there, not the most space overall, but the wireless charging pad and soft area to rest your arm is appreciated. We have an auto dimming rear view mirror. It's not frameless, also wouldn't expect it to be hazards and the 360 sense. Up top, we have our interior light, which is LED. I like the way that it actually activates quite a bit. We have a sunroof too. We can open it up with a click of a button. You have to actually manually open the shade, unfortunately, but not the sunroof, it opens up by itself. Goes out all the way to the end of the front row, wide opening. We can poke our way out of here. It is a hot one today in Wesley Chapel, Florida, sunny and 93 degrees, according to this 2024 mini. So we're gonna close this moonroof right up. We'll leave the shade open so when we hop out back, you see how much light is brought into the cabin. It's a two panel moonroof, but we have this support beam in the center, which is important for a small vehicle like this. But I like how they still gave us a glass out rear so the back passengers can have a pretty good visibility of the sky. The glove box, you pull the slatch, it is damped, not lined with felt, but it's pretty large. You'll stack up 20 license plates on top of each other. You may be able to fit a pair of shoes. Not bad for a subcompact hatchback. That's about it though, guys, for this interior. The headliner is also premium. We have a pretty premium feeling visor and an additional visor outside. I've never seen a vehicle offer this, but it also goes in and out. So I'm not quite sure why you would need that. Why not just make this thing slide back and forth like most auto manufacturers, but it's still nice to have this. Certainly not going to complain. We don't have it on the opposite side. The opposite side has an oh crap handle, rightfully so, because people that drive these minis usually drive them just like BMW drivers. That's about it though, guys, for the front seat. Let's hop out back, see how much space is offered back there, as well as the overall quality of the material. So again, no smart access out rear, just like always, I leave the back door locked. So let's unlock it real quick up top. We have soft touch materials, just like up front, some faux aluminum beneath that aluminum door handle, two Harman Kardon speakers on the door panel, and they are labeled Harman Kardon. Cushy soft armrest, rubberized material even for the center, down below, hard plastic. Auto one touch for the window, the rear seats, the padding doesn't go out to the door frame, but the seats themselves are still that beautiful Chesterfield malt brown leather trim. The legroom doesn't look the most impressive. I'm a little bit over six feet tall, sitting behind my seat settings, but actually, I have about an inch, maybe two of knee room, headroom. I have at least an inch, maybe two. So if you're under six foot two, six foot three, you should be able to sit behind your seat settings with no problem. You get map pockets on both of the front seats and lumbar control, if I forgot to mention. No air vents back here, but since it's a small hatchback, the front air vents should reach you with no problem. We got something going on under our feet, underneath the seat, but nothing that blows directly into our face. One cup holder, you can open up the rest of the screen for this panoramic moonroof and ton of light brought into the cabin. The interior lights back here are also LED. That's about it though, guys. This is a really impressive interior, especially for a $30,000 base price, even at $40,000 at the end of the day with all these really impressive options and features. Let's hop out to the cargo space. It's a little bit difficult getting out of this car, but once you're in, very decent amount of space for a sub compact. The cargo space underneath the mini badge is a button to open up this hydraulically lifted trunk. Not the most floor space. I wouldn't expect you to fit any TVs back here unless you fold the rear seats down 60-40, 60-40, and then you'll fit up to a 50 inch TV, maybe a 55. It'll be a tough squeeze. You may have to push the front seats up a little bit, but it should fit. The overall cargo space, as you mentioned, isn't the best. The secret storage down here will take a quick look. Quite a bit of it, so I'd recommend removing this whole tray and just having a little bit of additional space back here. What you see is basically what we get. We get some cargo hooks too, so you can tie some stuff down back here if you need to, and that's about it. We can shut this trunk right down, walk around this 2024 Mini Cooper S one more time. It's a nice vehicle. Not, not much has changed over the last eight or so years, or really over the last, like, 30 years, my whole life when I've seen minis, they've always just about looked the same. But now the performance is better than ever, especially with this two liter turbo, which cranks out almost 200 horsepower, 207 pound feet of torque. And speaking of that, let's take this 2024 Cooper S out for a drive and see what it's got. All right, guys, now just about seeing everything we need to see with the inside and outside of the all new 2024 Mini Cooper S four door hardtop. Let's take it out for a drive 
and see what it's got. Starting off in normal mode, the steering feels really on center and very well weighted. We'll see if it gets even better in sport mode, but in normal it feels good. Ride quality is okay. You definitely feel the bumps, but you'd expect to in a vehicle of this size. Brake pedal feel is excellent. You know what, let's just throw it right at the sport. That's what this car is all about. The throttle immediately gets more sensitive and you get a little better engine note. The steering feels a little bit heavier, not much, but it's noticeably heavier. We'll try out this roundabout. Oh yeah, you definitely feel the bumps. The steering feels great. The body roll is limited. We'll throw it into this MS mode. Try out these manual shifts. And taking a step out here. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, guys, this thing can rip. Downshift. Ooh, throwing it in. Good handling. Great steering feel. Looks like our fun is just about over. I'm not going to be passing all over on the right. And there's raindrops coming up now. One more time. Ooh, snappy dual clutch transmission, too. The steering feels so good. You forget that this car is only front wheel drive with skinny 205 wide tires. One more time. Ooh, good power. Yeah, BMW underrates the absolute crap out of their engines. This feels almost as quick as a Hyundai Veloster N that we reviewed on this channel. Guys, the steering here, mind-blowingly impressive. We'll make a U-turn real quick. Try this road out one more time check out a real world turning radius and I'll catch back with you in one second. All right guys, turning radius is really sharp to be expected with a car this size. Throw it into first gear on the gas. Boost. Woo! Oh. Guys, this thing rips. I would love to see a race between this and a GTI. I really think this thing will hold its own third gear. Woo! And it puts the power down even when the raindrops are falling. I'm loving it, guys. Wow. On the gas one more time. And it sounds good. You hear a subtle blow off when you let off the throttle. This is a fun car to drive. Twisty. Steering feels great. Light throttle. And it pulls consistently, too. Downshift. Sharp twisty. Feels really nice. We can try out a, another real world turning radius. Throw her back into first gear. All the gas. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. My gosh, this thing can rip. It is a blast to drive. We don't have to beat it up too much further. Throw it back into regular automatic mode. And even in sport mode, we're just cruising around 1800 RPM. So you can drive every day in sport. Yes, it makes things a little more sensitive. You'll burn a little bit more gas. But since we are still using our overdrive gears, the fuel economy should still be decent. We can take it out of sport, try it out in mid mode. Yeah, the steering does lighten up, but it's still very well weighted and on center. The throttle, a lot less sensitive. That's a big difference, but you still feel a lot of beef down low. Surprising amount. All right, guys, taking a step out onto this multiplane highway. We're just in mid mode, no longer in sport mode. Just daily acceleration. The steering feels great. Now third throttle, yeah, once the boost kicks in, it pulls well. This is just a third throttle. We're flying by cars. Yeah, you look down and you're moving so much quicker than you think you are. The way this vehicle builds speed, it has to be an underrated power plant. There's just no other way to put it. And just cruising at highway speeds, it's quiet in here. I've been saying this for a while. I consider the Mini Cooper S a like BMW half series, if that makes any sense. It's not big enough or luxurious enough to really be considered a BMW, but it's also so luxurious, refined, and sporty, where you can just basically feel the BMW heritage in this Mini Cooper. I really like these Mini Cooper vehicles. If you're living in a city and you still want a sporty vehicle, I can't see a better way to go. You're gonna still blow the absolute doors off of many sports cars costing more than this car. You'll fit in parking spaces. You can parallel park in places that most people can't. And you can still fit quite a bit of stuff. You'll fit four passengers here, four full size, six foot plus passengers with no problem. You can squeeze a kid in the middle of them in the back seat and comfortably seat five in a subcompact hatchback. 
As soon as this light turns green, we'll try out one more acceleration, this time in mid mode, and then really wrap things up. All right, guys, taking a step out here, one more turning radius test. It is sharp on the gas. Ooh. Now that the raindrops are falling a little harder, definitely no reason to push it any further. Overall, guys, if you're looking for a small hatchback, small SUV, but you still want the performance, definitely check this out. I wouldn't necessarily recommend optioning in $10,000 worth of packages, but for $30,000, under $35,000, this is genuinely one of the best sporty vehicles with a back seat that can seat four six foot plus passengers that I can think of. If you're looking for something like that, I would definitely recommend checking out the 2024 Cooper S. And check out the 2024. You can probably land a sweet deal on one of these, especially once the orders open up for the all new 2025s. And a big thanks to Minnie of Wesley Chapel in Wesley Chapel, Florida for helping make this review possible. I'll leave a link to her inventory below. And if you're looking for a new small hatchback or SUV in the Wesley Chapel, Tampa area, I would definitely recommend checking these guys out. And huge thanks to all of you for watching. I had a great time making this video. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. If you are subscribed, thank you so much. You guys know the channel is just not possible without you. And I really appreciate the constant support. But again, if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. Leave a like too. It really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. That's how these videos get promoted to new people. Leave a comment. Let me know what you like. Let me know what you don't like. Leave a comment. Let me know if there's any specific cars, SUVs, or trucks you want to see reviewed on this channel. And I'll definitely try getting those videos for you ASAP. But other than that, Again, thank you guys so much for watching and I hope all of you have a great day.